The Linux distro Elementary OS has made a name for itself for its elegant and user-friendly design. With the release of Elementary OS 7.1 Horus, the operating system continues its tradition of offering a visually appealing and intuitive Linux desktop. In this review, we take a look at some of the outstanding aspects of Elementary OS 7.1. My name is Michael and I am a Linux user since 2003. So now let's get it started. Those of you who have been following me for a while know that Elementary OS and I have a history. It was my main distro for several years. Nevertheless, my personal opinions will be put on the back burner here to give you a report as neutral as possible. Elementary OS is based on Ubuntu LTS. In this case, Elementary OS 7.1 is based on Ubuntu 2204 LTS. The code name for this version is Horus. The most striking feature of Elementary OS is undoubtedly its desktop design. It uses the specially developed Pentium interface, which is based on GNOME technology but offers a unique minimalistic aesthetic. The design is clean, fluid and elegant, resulting in a seamless user experience, from the icons to the window management and animations. The dedication to detail is evident here. Whether they like it or not is another matter. However, anyone who uses OS X or is currently using macOS will recognize a few similar traits even if we are not much looking at newer macOS versions as model here, but rather as generations such as OS X Leopard or Snow Leopard. As mentioned, the basis is Ubuntu LTS. Accordingly, this is an LTS distro that publishes its own point releases. The patches provided by Ubuntu are always provided and on top of that, the apps provided by the Elementary OS project are refreshed. Elementary OS is only available for 64-bit hardware. Besides the classic Debian package format, the flatback container format for software packages is also supported. The target group of Elementary OS are desktop users. There is one edition of Elementary OS and it focuses on a good user experience. This is aimed directly at Mac OS users but Windows users who want to try a slightly different concept than the taskbar below are also invited to try Elementary OS. What's new? Elementary OS 7.1 brings with it the following new features. Privacy enhancements better accessibility, app center improvements, improved gesture and keyboard navigations, Ubuntu 2204.3, the third point release, including the hardware enablement stack. With version 7.1, the installer has been improved again. However, the key points are the following. First, you can switch to start either in a live system to test it or start the installation process. Installation process, you have to take a petition, you have to make a choice if you want to erase your hard disk complete or install it besides Windows. After that, some typical points are coming like user creation and so on. The installer guides you through the installation process and is very handy. Let's come to system measurements. My fresh installed system uses 7.9 GB from the disk. The initial benchmark value in memory consumption was around 1.1 GB. The number of pre-installed packages was 1612 Debian packages and 11 Flatpak apps. And don't get confused, after installing NeoFetch, there were 1644 Debian packages installed. Let's check the desktop interface and concept. At the time of posting this video, Pantheon was shipped in version 1.521 plus R592 minus Ubuntu 7.1.1. How easy is that? The desktop concept implements a dock at the bottom, which is complemented by a bar with various functions at the top. At the top left is an app menu. You can switch between app icons and traditional menu. In the middle is the clock with access to calendar and appointments, while on the right there are system indicators and controls such as volume, that's here, volume and music, network, notifications, etc. One of my criticisms of Pentium desktop is and remains the arrangement of the window icons. So on the left there is close and on the right there is maximize. 
Unfortunately, Minimize is not available by default. Since I first started using Elementary OS, I have no idea how anyone could like this. If you feel the same way, please write about it in the comments. I have a solution for this dilemma. It is called Tweak Tool for Pentium Desktop. With it, you can arrange the window icons like in Windows or macOS, so either left or right. Apart from this demo system, I don't have an elementary OS system without Tweak Tool. I cannot work with these Windows icons. I'm so sorry. So let's come to the software selection. We have Linux kernel 6.2, as browser, there's web, as email client, there's elementary mail, as office package, there's nothing pre-installed, as software container, there's Flatpak. The software stack is really manageable. Elementary OS comes with many in-house apps. These apps include music, web, mail, photos, videos, calendar, files, terminal, code, and camera. This should cover an essential basic user need. The included web browser called web is a variant of the GNOME browser web. The selection of apps may be limited compared to other Linux distributions, but it is carefully curated and focused on quality. Developers are encouraged to publish applications through the App Center, resulting in a consistent and trusted source of software. Here lies not only an advantage, but also a very big disadvantage. The quantity of apps in the elementary Flatpak repo is manageable. Flathub, the largest marketplace for Flatpak apps, is not included. This means we can't find basic stuff like Signal Messenger, Spotify or Slack in the App Store. Let's check this out. Signal, not there. Spotify, not there. Slack, not there. Zoom, not there. To remedy this, we either have to install an app via FlatHub using the site load mechanism or add the repository manually in terminal. In both cases, the FlatHub website is our port of call. So let's open a browser, navigate to flathub.org, and now we have two ways. Set up FlatHub. In this case, I will open this in a new tab, go in the tab, and then I do not recommend you to use the elementary box, instead use the Ubuntu box. Elementary is based on Ubuntu, so not to worry. Here we have to add the FlatHub repository. Just mark this line, complete, copy it, open a terminal or console, paste it in, hit enter. Maybe you have to provide your user password and that's all. After a reboot of your system, you have access to all Flatpak apps hosted on FlatHub. The other way would be if you search an app, let's say, Firefox, click on the app, and then you have here, let's say you have a third option. You can click on this arrow and then you can copy this statement and execute it in console or terminal. Then you will also be able to install Firefox and also add the FlatHub repository. So, but now if you want to use this site load mechanism, just click on install. Now the Flatpak ref file was downloaded. If you make a double click or click here on it, then a pop-up will appear, trust or install this app. And by this way, the Flathub repository will be added as a source. There you see, now we have Flathub as source here available. And this is independent from what you choose here. If you choose cancel, then please keep in mind that the repository will be deleted again. And unfortunately, this is all more striking because the App Center does not offer any Debian packages to install. So you have to rely purely on the elementary Flatback packages by default. This is lousy. So if you look for known apps, for example, let's say GIMP, no apps found. Or let's say VLC, nothing found. Let's say Firefox, nothing found. Or another example, let's say Thunderbird. Oops, sorry, nothing found. Only a small hint to FlatHub appears, for example, here for Thunderbird. 
This way we can install Thunderbird via Sideload, which then also integrates the FlatUp repository completely. This is badly solved and cumbersome in my eyes. It is also not user-friendly in my opinion. This stubbornness has been going on for several elementary OS versions. Apparently I am one of the few who complain about this, I don't know. Basically, however, the App Center realizes a software distribution according to the principle of vulnerabilities. This means that a developer can specify his desired price for an app and I as a user can decide whether or not to pay something and if I do pay, I can determine how much it is worth to me. Up to this point, this is a great idea that is unparalleled on all other app platforms. But here again, there are weaknesses because the only payment method is credit card. Let's have an example. Let's choose Eddy. Eddy is an app with which you can install Debian packages per drag and drop. So, in my opinion, let's say it's a very great app. I want to have it. So now I click here on $5. And now I can increase or decrease this value. Let's say I want to say $50. That's okay. Nothing changes. If I say $1, that's all okay. And I also can say $0, then try for free. All good so far. But if you don't have a credit card or prefer to use an exotic payment method, for example, PayPal, you're out of luck. Or more honestly, the developer who would like to get something for his good work but cannot get anything because the App Store only accepts one payment method. I know those of you guys from the US probably don't know any other means of payment, but some of us might prefer another means of payment. So elementary devs, you could think about that. So it's a good idea that hasn't really been thought through to the end. Let's go back to the points that changed in version 7.1 compared to version 7. Do you still remember them? If not, these were privacy improvements, better accessibility, app center improvements, improved gesture and keyboard navigation. So let's take a look in order. Privacy optimizations. Privacy optimizations aim to address the need for privacy and the fact that many services don't care about it. For example, services or apps now notify you when your location has been requested. Furthermore, you can now determine which apps are started at system starts. This is now possible via a slider. After receiving feedback from various users with visual impairments, the elementary OS team has implemented some useful accessibility features. One feature is that an audio announcement is automatically played during the initial installation to inform users of the screen reader key combination. This audio announcement is also available during the initial setup after installation. And the second is the implementation of five different display filters to help people with color vision disabilities navigate the distribution. Let's check them out. They have also added some extra high contrast options and a lot of help text. App Center improvements. App Center has also been improved to show what permissions are required for any listed or sideloaded Flatpak app to run properly. It can now display app permissions such as location, sending notifications, auto start, read write system settings, and more. And last but not least, improved gesture and keyboard navigation. Similarly, multi touch gestures and keyboard navigations have received a boost thanks to a more comprehensive implementation across the system. Users can now use gestures to control workspaces and navigate using the various newly added keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard behavior settings have also been revamped, offering numerous options to optimize the experience. So let's come to my conclusion. Elementary OS 7.1 is a solid point release that brings selective improvements. The bottom line is that it delivers fine tuning without delivering revolutionary new features. That is not what is expected of it. Those who use Elementary OS 7 will get to 7.1 via the regular system updates. All that is necessary is to install updates. Whether a change from another distro to elementary OS 7.1 is justified, I would not put my hand in the fire. The necessary and added value is missing. 
Sure, it has a few innovations here and there, but these have been in place for years and have stagnated since then because they are simply not developed further. Examples include the App Store, which is limited to only one app source and only accept credit cards as a payment method. Or the arrangement of the window icons, unchanged for years. Nothing is happening here. That's a pity. I still think that since the departure of co-founder Cassidy James Bleed, the progress of the distro has slowed down noticeably. Perhaps he was the creative head and Danielle Four was more responsible in the area of quality insurance, unknown to me. But since both fell out and Cassidy left, nothing worth mentioning has been added. The existing one is being reworked selectively, that is perfectly fine. But a big hit is still a long time coming. So don't get me wrong, Elementary OS 7.1 is not a bad distro, but the magic stuff that once came with it seems to have somehow been lost. Now I would be interested to know what you think about Elementary OS 7.1 Horus. Do you like it? Are you satisfied as Elementary OS user or do you consider to switch to Elementary OS? Please feel free to write your opinion and thoughts in the comments. On this occasion, I would also be happy if you would leave a free channel subscription. That would help me. You are also welcome to click the thumbs up button and activate the bell. Then you'll be always get informed when something new appears here. Thank you for the kind attention, ladies and gentlemen. Have a nice day. See you soon. Peace.